first of all, I can tell just listening to Kyrie and, yeah. and knowing you, we're definitely going to have some of the most insightful question no. and answer sessions in the league between you guys <laughs> and the way you attack media questions. But, uh, I mean, for you, can you feel, I mean, is it a, a palpable difference in the energy going into the season after what happened with your acquisitions this offseason? For sure. I mean, and, and how could it not be? Obviously, uh, across the board, our talents have uh, risen, and we're excited about that. We're happy about that. Um, but we understand we have to still come together, gel as a unit, uh, figure out roles, all those things, and and hopefully try to be a championship caliber team uh, when it's all said and done sometime over the course of these four years. Well, what has a summer been like? We heard about the, the workouts, the organized workouts in L.A. And, and how everyone has been in the gym, especially the last few weeks. As you guys approach this and, and look to really continue to, to acclimate yourselves to one another, both on the floor, off the floor, how has that process been going? It's actually been going great. You know, to, to be able to get that many guys um, into the gym in the offseason in another location, um, you know, I mean, it, it's happened sometimes in the league, but it's relatively unheard of. So, you know, you got to credit uh, Kyrie for doing a great job uh, leadership-wise with that. And then, um, you know, the, the other guys for showing up as well. What was your relationship like with Kyrie prior to this process? And what kind yeah. of things were you telling him about the Nets as he was asking you? Yeah, no, so me and Kyrie kind of connected All-Star break 2000. 18. He that was skills, skills challenge. Skills, skills, yeah. yeah. Skill. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The skills challenge year was 18, right? Yes. Yeah. When you yeah, won. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. 2018. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. So that's when we connected. So the it was kind of a misnomer that like I just all of a sudden started talking to Kyrie and past I don't know this this past season right like we had connected then and just kind of had conversations over the course of time and then it just evolved you know we, we pick each other's brains based on just life you know family um basketball obviously cities different things like that and so as he you know went through his kind of own process of which team he wants to be on and stuff like that all i could do is offer up accurate you know comments uh on the brooklyn experience mm. you know how sean and kenny are and then he made his own decision you know he's his own man and and so that's that's really all I did. I, I didn't I, I played a hand in it obviously, but I didn't play like this like I don't know, undercover, <laughs> like something that people, You've been I guess, getting they, a lot of credit. Yeah, I'm like, oh, guys, <laughs> no, come on. Deservedly so. But, but y you did play a hand in it. Karis did, who we just had sitting. So many, we heard Kevin just say it up on the podium and Kyrie about the culture. And, yeah. they, and they watched what was happening in Brooklyn yeah. the past few years. And it, it feels like around the league, it was evident what was happening. It, how do you guys reflect on that it, and just know that there's new pieces coming in and yeah. new faces coming in with talent, but also the culture it remains? the same yeah um definitely sean and, and kenny did a great job of kind of establishing that roadmap then obviously getting the, the right guys in there we're we're happy that guys like you know myself Karis, joe i'm um, able to kind of carry the torch and, and lay the foundation and, and make it a acceptable place for you know guys like katie and Kyrie and uh dj obviously to to, to want to come and play and um now we've kind of put all that together uh, like we said this is a four-year process you know it, it's not just going to happen overnight but we definitely feel like we have the talent in place to to hopefully to grow into that type of team that everybody wants to be we've seen you individually grow so much over these last couple of years what was sort of your focus this off season and where do you see your game going and continuing to develop yeah um three-point shooting as always i mean you have to continue to get better at that and then obviously playing with stars we're going to have uh that type of focus around them you want to be able to space the floor and, and help them out any way you can other than that i mean Obviously, I'm probably going to have to be the dude that guards people this season. So, you know, Get ready. It, yeah, you know, first season it was like run the offense. Next season was like pass. Last year it was like drive. So I guess this year's defense. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll find you out. You seem like you're thrilled about that challenge. Uh, no, nah, I mean, whatever it is, like, uh, okay. it's, it's, I just do what I'm told, man. Uh, has there been anyone, and I'm sure there's a handful of guys, but since you, you've you all spent some time together the past few weeks, anyone that's, that's really stood out to you or yeah. anyone that you feel like has impressed you in ways you maybe didn't anticipate? Yeah, I mean, um, Obviously, Karis is always a name that's thrown around because he has a great work ethic. He's super talented. Um, just signed his contract, all that good stuff. Um, but from the people that aren't really talked about, it would definitely be Torian Prince. Um, you know, a phenomenal shooter. And I think his shooting has even surprised me uh, just from already knowing he was a good shooter. But it was like, oh, no, he's a, he's a next-level shooter. Um, probably right now, uh, second to Joe. Um, you know, I mean, I can't really include Katie, right. you know, at this moment. But, yeah, probably uh, he's, he's been shooting it great. You know what, Spencer, I think we're all looking forward to this. It's going to be an exciting journey. It's a little bit strange because one of your big pieces, I don't know, he may be back at some point at the end of the season. He may not. How does that change, or in what ways does it affect your expectations as a team for what you can achieve this season, knowing that 
what you can achieve is yeah. probably different if you have Kevin Durant or you for don't. For sure, for sure. I mean, it, it's not rocket science to know that. But the, the culture that Kenny and Sean built um, wasn't just about, like, the good guys, but it was about getting 1% better every day, just kind of getting a little bit better at all times. If there's a there's an ugly dude with a fro behind me. <laughs> yeah, see, hey, point guard for full vision. I, I got you. No, but uh, yeah, just getting one percent better every day, and and so whatever team that we put out on the floor, um, that's always the goal, right? And so we don't know our ceiling until he comes back, but uh, we definitely want to continue to improve uh, regardless because we have to set the stage and be ready for for the return. We can't just wait. You yeah. know, it's it's not like he's missing two games. You know, yeah. so it's a uh, it, it's going to be a process, but we're excited for it. it for you and you been in different places and through so much of this but as you get set to start training camp tomorrow what's it like with this feel and, and with this buzz around the group but knowing that you finally get a chance to officially get things underway and get to work oh it's extremely exciting i mean having having put on all this work even i'm um, kind of having this intensive session starting at all the way in probably like august or so like when we were back in la now it's really time to kind of stop playing against each other um it's, it's going to be a good moment you know it's it, it's it's fun hooping against your teammates but like i can only play against Kyrie so much like it's <laughs> at some point in time it's like all right guys let's play somebody else what, what, what's the balance like uh playing I, I i know you guys will all be playing next to each other but just what he brings to the table how different is that uh for you and just playing alongside him um uh, yeah no nah, dj's being weird behind us it's always the centers <laughs> something wrong with them it's, it's like they're so big they got to be goofy or something like that but um yeah i think we're gonna figure it out you know, it's something that's going to continue to play out over the course of, you know, the, the season, really, um, where the, whether there's injuries or people missing time or whatever it is. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to that kind of balance. I think uh, we're going to see a very dynamic Kyrie, though. Um, I, I said it before, he's a, probably a dark horse MVP candidate. Um, I think he's going to come out on fire and he's going to come out uh, playing really aggressive and hard and, and, and hopefully leading us to a, a win threshold that is better than last year.